Good morning. Welcome to Unity Baptist Church. It's great to see you all here this morning. Got a couple announcements for you. First, the big announcement is this. Uh, today was our youth picnic, and it still is, but it's not at Rumlin Park anymore. It is here at 5 o'clock, okay? So 5 o'clock is our church picnic. Uh, so please bring a dessert. There'll be plenty of food. It's going to be right here in the fellowship hall. Uh, and then we'll have some games for outside. We'll have like some beanbag toss and some things like that as well. So uh, come. We'll have some fun. Also, uh, along with that, it is a youth fundraiser. So if you want to kindly give to our mission trip that we leave next Saturday for, that would be great. Uh, and speaking of that, if you would love to come pray for us, we leave at 6 a.m. I know that's early. But you ladies are going to be getting up and going to, to, the, to the breakfast, though, right? So, yeah. So, no big, no problem. 6 a.m. if you want to come. We're going to, we're going to leave right here in the parking lot. Bonnie is looking at me like, I don't think so. But 6 a.m. if you love to come pray with us, uh, that would be great. Uh, and I would encourage you to do that. And then, also speaking of ladies' breakfast, if you haven't signed up, there's still an opportunity for you to sign up on either one uh, for the Ponderosa next Saturday morning at 8 30 and then other announcements are this we are going to have a sweet fellowship here on the first sunday in august august 2nd all right right in the fellowship hall at 8 30 8 45 8 45 i forget what time it is so 8 45 sweet fellowship and it will be karen's team so if you're on karen's team see her if you have any questions okay and they are surprised. Uh, and so that's in two weeks um, on August 2nd. We, we will have a sweet fellowship <laughs> since we're all here right now. So um, there is a couple inserts in your bulletin dealing with Blood Drive um, and then Mission Illinois. Are there any other announcements I might be missing? Good, because I don't like announcements. So uh, at this time, we'll have the children's church go out, kindergarten through third grade, and as they're headed out, we're going to stand up and greet one another.
quick, quick before I invite our ushers forward. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Sweet Fellowship is breakfast. Just to let you all know. Just, just in case you might have missed that, it's breakfast that morning on August 2nd. So um, we call it Sweet Fellowship. So come on, come and join us. So we'll invite our ushers. And at this time, Dwayne Brown's going to come lead us in our offertory prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we uh, come to you this morning with thankful hearts. Lord, we just thank you for everything you've given us and everything you've blessed us with, Lord. And as we uh, give a portion of that back to you this morning, Lord, we just ask that, uh, that you bless this offering and, and use it uh, uh, all over this uh, community and this world to, to do your will and to expand your kingdom, Lord. We just uh, thank you for everything and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Pam and Susan. Let's go, Lord, in prayers. We center our hearts and our minds on him today. In the book of Colossians chapter 3, it says, Therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the, that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Dear Heavenly Father, God, God, may we focus on you and you alone, God. God, may we care about your kingdom and your kingdom alone, Lord. Lord, as we sing praises to you this morning, may we reflect what you've done in our lives as we lift up our voices um, with joy and excitement to you. And God, I pray as you open your word later that you reveal yourself to us. It's in Jesus' name you're in that I pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I came in this morning and you would not believe all the stuff that I was hearing. The door with the sign that says use this door, it was locked. I couldn't get in. <laughs> and the water fountain just wouldn't squirt water up high enough. And then uh, over on this side, that was that side. This side over here it was, oh, more rain. Wow, it's hot. Our picnic is ruined. What are we going to do? Do you know what? I want to try to change your perspective a little bit this morning. Okay? Can I do that? Yes. We want to be a little bit more positive. We're here for one reason. Two reasons. Three reasons. No, four reasons. Seventeen reasons that we're here. 
and that's all. Nothing, maybe 25 reasons that we're here. Uh, I want you to say this with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made. A little louder. This, this is the day that the Lord has made. A little louder. This is the day that the Lord has made. That's not part of this song, but thank you for that. Man. <laughs> this song that we're going to sing next, that he has made me glad I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise on my heart. But Psalms 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. We are his people. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. We will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever and his faithfulness continues through all generations. Stand as we sing this song. you to really scream it out, okay? Here we go. I will Why should we be glad? Why should we be glad? Because the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, but this next song says, I am thine, O Lord. Scripture tells us, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, knowing that we are his. As we sing this song.
taste and see with the Lord that the Lord is good. Psalms 34 8 says that the longer you serve him, the sweeter he gets. <coughs> taste and see. Let me read that a little different. Taste and see. Not just taste and see, but taste and see that the Lord is good. <coughs> come here? Why are you here? To worship, but to know more. To know more about Jesus and who he is and how he can affect my life. How, can he, how he can affect your life. Scripture says, be filled with the fullness of God, which basically says, know more about Jesus. That's why he sent us the scripture. That's why he gave it to us, so that we could know more as we sing more about Jesus.
out singing this morning. Michelle will probably never ask me to do the music again because of it, but I don't care. It was good. morning we have something special for you because these guys are a couple of guys I'm telling you. <laughs> we have Brad Pryor and Bob Langley is going to come and they're going to sing us. And you're going to play too right Bob? Okay. They're going to play and sing. Come on out here. Yeah. I know that all of us have lost loved ones, and it's always hard to give them up. I'd like for you just to think back of your younger days, of your childhood, about your mother, your father, maybe a brother or sister, cousins, friends. Just try and think about, uh, open your minds and think about the special memories. Senior moment. <laughs> Precious memory, how they linger, how they ever flood my. So in the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold, precious memories. Sacred scenes unfold, precious father, loving mother, fly across the lonely years, till old home streams of my child. my 
sacred scenes unfold as I travel on life's pathway I know not what life shall hold as I wander Precious memories flood my soul. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. stillness of the midnight precious sacred scenes unfold precious sacred scenes unfold Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, God, as you open your word now, Lord, I pray that you open our hearts and our minds to it. And Lord, I pray that you speak through it. Uh, and Lord, that your voice is heard loud and clear. Listen, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. How are you all doing? Good, good, good. Um, I feel weird with other people on the stage while I'm preaching. You know what I mean? Like I'm afraid like they're going to come jump me from behind or something. <laughs> but then if I turn this way, there's more of you than them. So <laughs> we made it. We made it. It was close. It was close. But uh, how many of y'all have ever like been in life and it has just been crazy? Okay. You're all raising your hands. I mean, like, crazy, crazy busy. I mean, you got, like, this going on. You're planning for this. You're prepping for this. There's, there's all this going on. Well, let me tell you that. That's where I'm at, okay? Uh, life has been crazy. And, and um, you know, you, you're just my life with my wife. My wife calls me cranky. Um, Crank, cranky happens, though, I tell you. Cranky happens when your life gets busy. And I, I've just been planning and going and doing this, and I go into that, and I get this, I get this phone call, this text. You all have been there, right? I mean, where life is just crazy, and, and you don't have a minute to just breathe, or, or you choose not to breathe. You just, you just want to get it done. You want to keep going. You want to keep it going. And, and, and that's where I'm at. Um, I told you guys in Sunday school I'm going to talk about me today, and I apologize uh, because number one rule of, of youth group is it's not about me. Perfect, okay? And, and that's important. And so we have to make sure um, that this message isn't about me, but I want to I connect with you just a little bit. My life is crazy, um, I, there is just all this stuff going on, and I'm stressed out, and I, I, I need a vacation, but I really don't want to plan a vacation. I just want someone to take me somewhere and just drop me off on an island with absolutely nothing, and I'll be fine. But you guys have been there, right? You've been there where life is just crazy. The hard thing is this, and the unfortunate thing is this, that when our life gets crazy, unfortunately, our spiritual life sometimes 
gets nixed or it gets downgraded just a little bit because our focus has shifted so much that who knows and who has time to want to really just get in God's word, who really wants to sit down and pray, who really wants to connect with, with other believers. I mean, come on, life is busy. We have to get this done and our focus shifts and our spiritual life often gets just a little bit of crazy just as well and 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 sometimes we justify it where we say well you know I'm doing this and you know God can just wait you know I, I'm listening to uh, my WBGL or I'm lift, listening to my Joy FM in the car and you know isn't that enough and, and sometimes we just because of our circumstances just get to that point where where our relationship with Jesus is just as effective as our relationship with that radio dial, okay? And we forget about who Jesus is because our life is so crazy. Well, this morning, I want to look real quick at a story, a solution, and a challenge, okay? That, that's what we're going to do. And the story is only three verses long. So you guys are like, man, we like when the youth pastor preaches. So three verses long. And so we're going to be in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, starting with verse 22. And let me kind of set this up a little bit. Jesus and his disciples um, have been doing ministry. They have been, they have been doing, doing some things. Um, Jesus has been teaching. He's been telling parables. And now... They are to go from one region to the other, but they have to cross a body of water, okay? Very, very familiar passage, and this is what it says, starting in verse 22 in Luke chapter 8. Now, on one of those days, hmm, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat and he got into a boat and said to them, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they launched out. So Jesus and the disciples, they checked their radar. They pulled out their iPhones, make sure there, there's nothing going on. Because again, you're getting in a boat, right? I mean, that, that makes sense. So probably their radar was, yep, it's good. Let's get in the boat. So they get in the boat because they are wanting to go to the other side because they want to do ministry on the other side. So they get in the boat and everything is good. They're going over to the other side, and Jesus says, hey, let's go, and so they, they start taking off. It's so nice that in verse 23, it says this, but as they were sailing along, he, Jesus, fell asleep. Think about that. This trip has started off awesome. I mean, there's nothing going on. It's a beautiful day outside. We're in the nice boat, and we're going, and it's so nice that Jesus himself decides to take a nap. Man, that sounds good right about now. Decides to take a nap, so he lays down in the boat, and he is napping. As they're sailing, he, he's napping. Um, you know, sometimes we just need some rest, okay? Je Jesus points that out. Jesus' life points it out. And this is the, one of those times where Jesus said, I just need the rest. So he is relaxing in the boat as they travel on this beautiful, beautiful day on the lake. Then we read on in verse 23. After he falls asleep, it says, and a fierce gale of wind descended on the lake, and they, the disciples, began to be, and Jesus, to be swamped and to be in danger. How many of y'all enjoy those pop-up storms? You know, you're just driving along, it's so nice, and then all of a sudden a pop-up storm, and you have like lightning and thunder and all this rain and the winds awful. That's exactly what is happening here, okay? Jesus is napping, and note, Jesus is still napping, okay? And they, the disciples, are experiencing this storm, okay? Um, the storm happens to be named Gale, but, I mean, they, they are... You didn't, you'll, you'll get that one later. You'll get that one later. But they, uh, they're having this storm going on, and, and the boat, what the scripture says, is being swamped and to be in danger. I don't know what swamped necessarily means in, in, in this context, but my guess is that it's starting to go under, 
All right, it's starting to be taken over by the way. It's just starting to be overwhelmed. It's starting to be in a sense that, man, we don't have any security as we are sitting on this boat. Sounds like my life. <laughs> sounds like my life right now. I mean, just overwhelmed. Or it sounds like those circumstances that sometimes we just get so bogged down into living life that we forget about what it is we should be living for. And that's exactly what the disciples are experiencing here. The, the, the disciples are experiencing this sense that, he, that the storm is going to crush them and they are in danger. Then they recognize that. So what do they do? Verse 24, the smart thing. They came to Jesus and woke him up. Okay, now listen, the, the disciples had a solution, right? Hey, let's just get out of this boat and bail and see if we can swim the shore. Or hey, let's, let's, just, let's just, uh, just hope every, everything's good and we'll make it to the other side. They, they had those possibilities. They really did. Um, and sometimes in our life, when our life gets crazy, we try to find some other solutions. We try to find some quick fixes that, man, we just work through this, maybe I'll get a little bit of a break and we can do this, okay? They had those choices, but... Listen, they made the right choice. They made the right choice, and so they went to Jesus. Now, Jesus is going to rebuke them here in just a second, but listen, they made the right choice. They went to Jesus, and they woke him up saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. We have no hope. We have no hope. We are stuck in this situation. This storm is going to destroy us, and we are going to die. That's crazy. I'll tell you, though, man, when life gets you, it can really get you. And you can come to that point where you just want to give up. Okay, you just want to give up. You're so overwhelmed with stuff. You're just like, ah, nothing is coming together. Nothing is going right. What's going on? The disciples were there. I mean, come on. We're just out for a boat ride. We're going over to the other sea to do some min over to the other side of the lake to do some ministry. Everything's going to be fine. But now the storm is hit, and we are going to perish. We are going to die. So they woke Jesus up and they shake him. They said, help him. In the middle there of verse 24, it says this, and he, Jesus, got up, rebuked the wind and the surging waves, and they stopped, and it became calm. You know, I don't know what this looked like, but I, I think this, that I'm a picture person, so I, I think Jesus stood up and he threw like a backhand at the wind and maybe like a Judy chop right, right at, the, at the waves. I'm not exactly certain, but he does that, okay? He stands up and he commands that the wind and the rain and the waves and everything stop. And it did. Man, that's crazy. But what a great picture of what Jesus can do. What a great picture of what Jesus can do. You know, we get so bogged down in our life and it gets crazy and it feels like that storm that those disciples were on. And Jesus woke up and calms it all. Calms it all. But listen, Jesus then says says something and and, and this this here um is, is a crazy question because it makes you want to do two things. It's a crazy, crazy question because, one, it makes you want to pull my hair out that Jesus would ask this. What are you thinking, Jesus? Why would you ask that? But then, two, in the same turn, it stomps on my toes, and it hits me right, right on them, and they hurt because Jesus says in verse 25, and he says it to the disciples, and he said to them, where is your faith? What? 
What do you mean, Jesus? Where's my faith? What are you talking about? I mean, look at this storm. It's about to kill us. We're about to perish. We're about to die. What are you talking about? Where is my faith? I mean, come on, God. Look at this schedule. Look at those phone calls. Look at those tests. Look, look, at, look at my calendar. Look how busy it is. What do you mean, where is my faith? But that's what Jesus asked. And that's what Jesus asks us. Why? Why do you think he asked that? He asked them because of this. He asked them because the disciples forgot who they were and whose they were. They were God's chosen instruments. And we forget the same thing. We look at the schedule, and, and, and these disciples looked, looked at the storms and made their circumstance, made that circumstance above all that. We do the same thing. We look at our circumstance and put that above anything else and forget that God is in control, that Jesus is in control. Wow. Wow. So he asks them, where is your faith? And sometimes he asks us the same thing. Why are you feeling so overwhelmed? Again, the, the, this is a sermon at myself, so you guys just deal with it. Why are you feeling so overwhelmed? I'm in control. I know what I'm doing. Forget about that schedule. Forget about the, the calendar, whatever, and focus on me. The end of 25, the disciples they're starting to get it just a little bit more. After he says, where is your faith? They were fearful and amazed, saying to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? You know, I think as a church, sometimes, sometimes we, we've, we miss those two things. We miss one, that the disciples were fearful, I, I tell you, the church has lost a little bit of its fear of God. God is a holy God. God is a just God. God is a loving God. And we need to realize that and remember that and remember that he is God. He is, he is sovereign. He is in control of everything. So the disciples here, they, they, they had a little fear. They recognized, man, there's something about this guy named Jesus. There's something about him that he claims to be. But not only that, they were amazed. They were amazed. I mean, have you guys ever been in those circumstances where, where life is crazy and all of a sudden you actually let it go? I'm not going to sing for you guys, but you let that go and you focus on Jesus and you see what happens, man, the storm is calm and you're just amazed. You ever been in those moments where you're, I mean, your jaw just drops and you're like, okay, that's a God thing. God, God's in control. He, he knows what he's doing. That, that's exactly what the disciples were going on. That's what, exactly what was going on here with the disciples. They realized, man, he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. We need to focus and set our hearts and our minds on him. That's the solution. That's the solution to our problem of being overwhelmed in this life. That solution is Jesus and Jesus alone. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. That, that, that's what I want you guys to flip to. Here's our solution. John, Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Let me tell you this. I'm going to pre preface this verse for just a second. I dislike this verse because it causes me to have to stop. And if you, and if you don't know me, um, if you've seen the Energizer Bunny, that's me, okay? 
This verse causes me to stop, and this is exactly the verse that I need to hear, and hopefully you hear as well. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10 says, Cease striving. Other versions say, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God's voice here breaks through, breaks through all that stuff, all the other stuff that we put in our lives that aren't of him, all the stuff that overwhelm us, all the things that just make us busy, and he says, be still, cease cease striving, enough, I am God. Man, I am God, and I have it under control. Stop exalting yourself. Start, stop exalting your situation. Stop exalting everything else and exalt me. And let me be God. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. Man. What a solution. What a solution, right? I mean, what a solution to, to this crazy life when we're just overwhelmed, we're being, we're being tossed at sea, we feel like we're perishing, we feel like we're dying, we feel like we're drowning, and God says, stop. Stop and look at me. Stop. Stop moving. Be still. Stop, stop fidgeting. Stop whatever, okay? Again, he, he, he has to really use those phrases with me a lot of times. I am God. I have it under control. Man. I will tell you this. That is easier said than done, right? It is. Why? Because we think that we can fix it. We think that we have more power than God himself. And that is ridiculous. But we do that and we forget, we forget whose we are. And we forget that God is in control. I want, I want to encourage you guys this morning. I, I, I really do because um, in the same term, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging myself. Man, if we learned as his children to turn to him in our storms, to turn to him when, when, when life is crazy, to turn to him even when life is good, when just learn to turn to him and be still and know that he is God, do you realize how much love how much grace would flow through us? Do do we realize that? Do we realize how much of God's spirit will just be flowing through us? Because I, I I wanna be careful here that this verse in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10 doesn't say stop and be idle and don't do anything, okay? It, that, that, that's not what it means. It means to stop and recognize God to get your bearings back, to get focused on him. And I tell you this, when God commands you to be still and know that he is him, you're gonna get, you're gonna get your bearings back. But then God's gonna speak to you. And he is going to speak to you and he wants action out of you. And I'm not talking about action for this world. I'm not talking about action for yourself. I'm talking about action for him. And I, I want to I look real quick at Colossians chapter 3. Uh, I read the, the first por- portion of this um, during Saturday prayer time about seeking God, seeking Christ, seeking things above and not things of this earth. And, and starting with verse 12, the writer of Colossians gives us a challenge for the church, and it says this. 
So as those who have been, this is Colossians chapter 3, starting verse 12. So as for those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against one another, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Life will not be crazy if you do what those verses say. Life will not be crazy and, and you won't feel so overwhelmed if you do what those verses say. And, and, and those verses say, they say church, they say, they say my child, I loved you so much that I died for you on the cross. I, I paid your sin penalty and now put on that heart of compassion, put on that humility, put on that gentleness, put on that forgiving spirit, put on love and be bonded together in unity, praising God and giving thanks, thankfulness to him and to him alone. That's where we need to be. That, that's exactly where we need to be. We call our, if we call ourselves followers of Jesus, okay, we need to be living our lives reflecting him each and every day and not worried at what's gonna happen next not worried about what event is coming up next. We're not worried about dotting every I and crossing every T. We're worried about knowing God and fulfilling what he's called for us to do. And we won't be overwhelmed. We, we won't be overwhelmed. And we can just be at peace knowing that Jesus loves you and that Jesus loves me and telling other people that Jesus loves them. That's where we need to be. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you. Um, thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for what he did for us at the cross, God. God, we stand amazed I stand amazed at what you did there. And God, don't let anything in this life get in the way of that amazement. And God, I pray that as your church, as people who should be following you, that we forget about our circumstances forget about our search situations and focus on you and you alone. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want you all to stand. We're going to sing. I invite you if, if you want to come and just pray give it all out. This is the time. Come.
Thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, again, I invite you back tonight, 5 o'clock, for our ch- church picnic here. Bring a dessert. Um, and, and I want to challenge you guys, too, as we leave. May we be the church out in this community. May we be the people reaching people with Jesus. Bob, let's see. With me one more time. This is a day that the Lord has made as we finish out with this song.